Hi, I am Paul Brody and we're in my shop. Mitch is behind the camera. I'm learning how to build a race bike again and Mitch is fine tuning his new camera. Welcome. Last week we uh, worked on the backing plate and since then I did some work on the sprocket. Mitch is going to show you some photos. So I did this on the on the mill. Now you might wonder why I did this on the mill and not on the lathe. You want the same spacing in four different spots. That's like X and Y. So that, that the sprocket, when it turns, it doesn't run out. So if you do it on the on the lathe, you got to use a four jaw chuck. And then when you measure it, if you have to make an an, an adjustment. I guess you use a dial indicator and you have to pull it a little bit. So what I did, I, I did it on the mill. I bolt it right down. You'll see the photo. And then I've got my XY. And then after I measure, I can easily make an, an adjustment on the mill table looking at the XY. I can move it one thou if I want. I can move it half a thou if I want. So it's a much more accurate way of doing it. I used, uh, it started out with an inch hole. So I used the boring bar and at first I used a single point tool. I used it in, in the center hole and then as the hole got bigger and this became out of balance, I did add a, add a, a counterweight. Then I moved it to the outside hole and I made it larger. And then when the hole got to be too large for this, then I took my lathe tool I put a square a tool into a round hole and that's how I, I cut the last part of the sprocket. I measured what the studs were in, inside, outside. I added them up, divided by two, and that's why we found the center line of the bolt circle. So I drilled six holes, one hole every 60 degrees, and it's pretty heavy, so I'm going to add some lightness to it. I've already started marking a hole where I think they should be. So that's what went on. That's a good step. We're doing the intake system today. So intake system is going to consist of the Spanish cob that took a long time to find. It actually came out of Spain. It's a Spanish AMO. It's a 34 millimeter. There's going to be an intake system. I've got a piece of, of tubing here. And there's a flange here that bolts onto the intake. On the, on the tubing, what, what was easier for me to do, and maybe if you're doing a project like this, I bought what's known as a U-Bend. I went to my local auto parts store. It's called, up here in Langley anyway, it's called Mopac. They sell a lot of high-performance stuff and so for about, I don't know, 16 bucks. I got this, so I cut off one side. Usually one side is, is a little bit nicer than the other. This, is, this has the marks where it gets held in, in the clamp and then it gets pulled around. So I choose the nice side of the bend. And then we're gonna make a, a velocity stack and I've got a nice, nice piece of aluminum here. So there's gonna be Velocity stack. This actually comes with what looks like a velocity stack, but it's got a sharp edge here and that creates a bunch of, of turbulence. So we got a we got a drawing here. Mitch has a photo he'll show you. It's got a nice smooth edge. So we're going to be making that in the lathe. What has to happen on the carburetor? It has to be bored out. It's 34 millimeters. It's got to go to 35. I got the specs off, off the Bladden brothers in England. Years ago, they were very, very helpful to me. I'd phone them up on my dime, England, and we'd talk for an hour and I'd make notes and they gave me all sorts of information. So that was really, really nice of them. When you bore out a carburetor, you don't just make the hole in the center of the lathe. You have to offset it because on a carburetor, there's a roof and there's a floor. So when you bore out a carb, you take most of the metal off the roof and you take the minimum amount off the floor. I did a little bit of a drawing here and you can see how the two holes aren't lined up. There's more, 
there's more metal to come off the top. I only want to take five thou off the bottom. So in total, I'm taking out about 35 thou, 34, 35. So I need to hold this in the four jaw. And it's, it's not going to be in the center. It's going to be out 30 thou, and then I, I bore it. So I don't want to use the four jaw to hold this here. So I made up a, a tube and it's got a slot so I open it up with a screwdriver and it fits on there really well and then I can really hold this well in the forge jaw because you don't want this coming loose that would ruin the carburetor so that's going to happen we're also going to blank off off the choke because what happens on these carburetors at high rpm when you're up at 8,000 rpm there's some vibration and it bleeds. It, it bleeds into the main chamber and it makes it a little richer. So it's a race bike. We don't need a choke. We're going to blank it off. So why don't we take the carb apart now? And the first thing we'll do is to blank off the choke. It's metric because made in Spain. So we're taking out some four, four mil screws here. There we go. And that's the velocity stack that's going to get lost. I got the carb used, but it looks like it's in nice shape. It's not, doesn't seem like the, the slide is all scored or anything like that. I've been looking forward to this segment for quite a while now because I like making velocity stacks and modifying intake systems and things like that. So all the jets have to come out. We have to take out, out the needle jet. That's the big jet that sits in the bottom of the, in, inside the float ball because the needle jet, there you go, there's some more stuff. That's the needle jet. Can you see right inside there? I can't bore through when, when the needle jet's there. So that'll have to come off. Oh, it's going. Okay. All right. It pushed out. Or it's down anyway. Maybe it doesn't have to come out all the way, but... Oh, it's coming... No, it's coming out. There we go. That's all it is. It's just... It goes in there with a the press fit. Okay, so that's ready to... Ready to go into the lathe now. When the needle spins clockwise, it's coming towards me. So there's the zero, and that's, that's at the very top. And then when it comes down here, it's going away. And that is 30 thou. So that's basically set up. See what's happening? It starts hitting right there. And over here, it's hitting here. So it's so this carb needs to move over that way a little bit. So I'm going to loosen this jaw and, and tighten this jaw. Touch. And tighten this jaw. Okay. Well, I'll try it once again, just inside of that. That's looking even to me. So we've got our offset now and we're centered this way. Let's take a cut. I need to face this because this is where the velocity stack has to, has to register onto. So if we want the two bores to be equal, and lined up I have to face this and then I also have to have to face the inside of this here so that it's a full circle and then the velocity stack fits into here fits into this space here I've sharpened up a high-speed steel tool nothing fancy but we're gonna we're gonna take a small cut off here and then make a shoulder in there
we're gonna blank off the choke. I said I'd do that first, but we didn't, so. That's where the air comes in for the choke, and you can see the hole inside. So I'm gonna take some measurements, and we'll turn a piece of aluminum. I got a piece of aluminum. I'm gonna hold this in the chuck, machine this down. We'll cut it off, we'll make a nice little end on it, and we'll lock tight it in. There we go. Okay, that's what I want. I'm just using regular blue Loctite. Can you tell I've had this a long time? This is from the bicycle building days when we used to build wheels, so I bought the big one. It's lasted quite well. There we go. That's what it looks like. That's with the choke blanked off. So we're on to the next stage now. Let's do a little uh, little silver soldering. Do you see on the cob here how there's a groove? This is where the rubber boot fits on. So it goes over like that. And so this piece of the rubber fits into the groove and then we've got these nice Nice hose clamps made out of stainless steel. These are the narrow ones. I like the narrow ones. So we need to make something here which mimics this, which the boot fits onto. So I made up a couple rings. So I'll do a little sanding here and then we'll put the rings over there and we'll silver sole them on. They're gonna have a space in between them, just like on the carb here. This should be a, a light press fit. There we go. So that goes on okay. So now I need to pull it down a little bit. Maybe I can just do it by hand. Okay. So do you see what's happening here? It kind of mimics what the carb looks like. And the rubber boot goes right over top and holds it together. And then the carb becomes rubber mounted. So this is the flux for silver solder, and this is the flux for the, it's for the brazing, and they both come from the gas flux company in, and I have to explain this now, because I've been telling people for 11 years, all my frame building 101 students, I'm telling them that it comes from El Raya, Ohio, and I kind of like saying that because it kind of rolls off my tongue, but I got corrected. Someone actually lives in El Raya. No, it's not El Raya. It's Eliaya. There's the word. Eliaya, Ohio. Apparently in Ohio, the R is silent. So I apologize for all those years when I was telling you the wrong name of the place. It's good stuff though. So there we go. There's the flux. I'm going to put it up on top of a heat brick here. So we're going to do a little sanding on the silver solder because that helps it to flow better. I don't sand any other rod normally. You know, the rods have to be clean. <clears throat> but silver solder, it likes to be sanded. It just flows better. It was Derek Bailey that told me that back when I worked in Rocky Mountain. He said, always, sol always sand your silver solder. There we go. And I just flow from one side. I won't go to the other side. Maybe it'll go all the way through. I 
I like silver soldering when everything goes right. It's really satisfying. And then you get the bad days. When it doesn't do what you want it to do. So I got the torch really close. I got a small flame. A little different than doing a braze on a bicycle frame. Okay, done. The next step is the velocity stack. And I have a nice piece of aluminum here at 6061. And this is going to go, it's going to be shorter, half, half. It's going to go, it's going to fit on there. And if you look on the drawing, you see how there's a radius here. Can you zoom in? I made a special tool yesterday. I found this little carbide bit. It was only that long. So I TIG welded it with a stainless rod, because I don't know what kind of steel this is, onto a piece of half by half cold rod. Can you see how that's going to work? That's, that's going to go up and make that radius in there to save weight. I could leave that solid, but you know, we are concerned about weight here, so I'm going to do it right. On the race bike that got stolen, I had a, a velocity stack exactly like the one that we're going to make now, but it was made out of black Delrin. And I could have got some Delrin, but I thought, no, we're going to make this bike shiny. I don't usually, I don't usually go for real shine, but it seemed like a good thing to do on this bike. Lots of aluminum polished up somewhat. What I'm doing now is loosening off the, con this is the compound. Loosening the compound and I'm going to angle it five degrees. I've got my my degrees here And I can kind of see with these eyes So what does it look like inside there? Oh Okay, we're going to leave that. That's done. We're going to machine down now and we're going to go down to the shoulder. So we'll make a mark here where we want that to be. I use this tool on the backing plate. This is going to be very handy to let me know what the thickness is here because I don't know how else you would measure that. So you can see here we got about three eighths of an inch and it needs to go down to a couple millimeters which is about 80 thou. So we still have quite a bit of metal to come off but this is a this is a really handy tool for this right here. I'm going to mark the halfway so I stay off that.
this scrape is made out of an old old triangular file. I've had this years. <laughs> Next step we're going to do, we're going to machine this down so that it will fit inside of here. And that is the register. So it says minus two. So that should fit. Well, let's see what happens. I'm not sure. That's where the cut goes, so now I'm going to machine some space here for this, for the left side of the tool. And someone suggested WD, so this will be a big experiment to see how the, how the WD works. The parting. Never used it before. Okay, so I know I have to file that very, very, it's so close to going in. It's, so that's basically what it's going to look like. So next thing to do, because we have to drill a couple holes here, I'm going to make a insert, a, a five degree insert, so we can hold this in the rotary table and then we get the holes 180 degrees apart. <laughs> making this fit the carb. Oh, look at that. There we go. All it needed was a few thou off. So look at that. When you're looking down the bore, look how smooth that is. There's no step, nothing. Just a smooth, smooth transition. That's how you make 35 horsepower out of a little Aramaki. One of the ways. What we're going to do now is to drill a couple holes here. So we're going to set this up in the rotary table and I'm going to show you how I zero the rotary table in the mill. It's really simple, but if you don't know, then soon you will. It happens to be five eighths. It can be half inch, three quarters, whatever, but it goes into a collet and it goes up inside and we make it tight. There we go. So we move this in into position, bring the quill down. So now the vise is locked onto, onto the center of the spindle. See how the slots don't line up? So now I move this back and I check this one here. So now I've got both slots lined up. These are the bolts to hold it down one on each side 
like that. Make it tight. And then X zero, Y zero. So now it's, now we know the chuck is centered onto the quill. That's important. Now we loosen off this. I'm gonna lock the X. And now I can move this. So I'm at 180. I'm going to go around the other side to zero or 360, the same thing. And then we'll drill the other hole and then on, on the drill press I'll just open them up to four millimeters. So that's a nice way to make accurate bolt holes. Allen screw holes. Yeah, it just pops off. There we go. Woohoo! Okay. This one looks like it's lined up perfectly, but the other hole looks like they didn't get it right or something. Something happened on the other thread. This will hold it in there for what we need to do right now. What we're going to do is we have to put this into here and then it's going to get TIG welded on the bottom, silver soldered on the top. So let me do a little bit of sanding here and then we'll set it up on the bike. I wanted to show you a couple things about, about cylinder heads. So let's, let's have a look here. This is a stock head and this is, this is the racing head and what I did I took an Allen screw, it's, a, it's a aluminum, and I put it in, I cleaned the threads out, I Loctited it in, I screwed the, in the Allen screw as hard as I could. Can you see here, there's, that's where the screw went in there, and that's where the screw went in there. So what I did is I, I repositioned these holes. These holes aren't the same. If you look at this, can you see here? See, if I line up that hole, can you see how that hole doesn't line up? These have to be spaced wider because here's a, a stock intake manifold off an Aramaki. And you can see that it's definitely a little bigger, isn't it? It's a lot larger. So this is all opened up. Look at the size of this port. you go, got to lock that. See how much larger this port is? So this is the racing head. So we're going to put on the manifold and then we'll, we'll put it on the bike and then we'll set the angle of this inside the flange and then we'll weld it on. So let's go put this on to the, to the bike. Just slides on like that. So we're going to put the boot on and the rubber is pretty new so it goes on fairly well. There we go, we'll put the carb on. It's kind of exciting, I don't know about you but I like doing stuff like this. Okay, so how are we lining up now? I'm liking that. Looks good. So if we take that off and we do some welding, some TIG welding.
Got silver solder once again. Okay, we've gone all the way around. That one, that works out quite nicely. I'm gonna bead blast it now and then we got some we got some some spray paint we'll put on it and we'll see how fast that dries. We still have to spray paint a bicycle frame, right Mitch? Mm -hmm. I have no idea whose frame we, we might paint. So look. It's, it's dry. How, how long is that now? A minute and a half. A minute and a half and it's dry. I can, I could install this now. That's not bad, eh? A minute and a half for the paint to dry. Well, that was a day's work in the shop here. So I hope you all enjoyed watching the Aramaki intake system being made in the shop. Thank you for watching. Mitch and I like coffee. We like good coffee. Hope you stay safe this week and have a good time. Goodbye.